Good morning and welcome back to World Talks as we're going to discuss Hungary and its Sovereignty Protection Office, a very interesting institution indeed. Critics, critics warn that the Hungary Sovereignty Protection Office aims to give Viktor Orban complete control over the country's media and NGOs. What direction is Hungary headed? And how can we assess Orban's recent moves to discuss? I am joined here this morning by Botan Felady, foreign policy expert. Good morning. Good morning, so de delighted to have you with us. So it is a very interesting institution indeed. However, it has focused on two organizations in Hungary specifically, right? Uh, so um, so the, these are Transparency International Hungary and Atlatsto. Right, I mean, of course, I'm back. Atlatso, indeed. Yes, that's so, uh, so could you tell me why these two particular institutions? Um, thank you for the invitation, and I am glad to help as much as I can. Um, the Transparency International needs no introduction. This is one of the NGOs that has been in the crosshair of the uh, government-friendly media for years, together with Amnesty and other international NGOs. However, Atlatso is one of the investigative outlets, um, which is associated with the liberal side, um, and therefore it is a warning shot that it not only um, working against NGOs, but also driving investigations against independent media. Uh, that was a very debated point during the adoption of the legislation around the Serenity Protection Office, when some of the Fidesz politicians promised that it would not touch the media. So I guess it is a very important messaging that actually the first investigation out of the two targets, one is an independent media outlet. Right, and I believe uh, we had a similar law introduced in Slovakia. So my, my question is, can we see it as a wider trend of, of, of some governments trying uh, to take greater control of what's going on? Definitely, it has been a tool that we have seen spreading across the eastern region. We should not forget the case of Georgia, uh, where it was a similar law that triggered the protest a couple of uh, months ago uh, that was driving the public debate uh, and the question whether Georgia would be close to the EU or not. Um, and of course, um, most of these discussions usually bring up uh, the similar legislation in Russia. Um, so therefore, yes, we can expect that, for example, uh, if there are other radical governments uh, coming to power in Europe, they would consider similar legislations, though one must add that it must be either a coalition that is uh, comprising uh, right-wing radicals or um, a government without a coalition. That is quite rare in most of the European countries. So taking a closer look at the uh, SPO, what can it actually do? How does it work? So the SPO um, has received initially 400 million foreign budget, which was increased uh, since its start in February. So this year, February, when the institution has been officially launched, and ever since its budget has been tenfold increased, um, making it a 4 billion foreign budget. Just to make the proportions, um, the Hungarian Constitutional Court has somewhat less of a budget uh, than currently the sovereignty uh, uh, SPO office. So therefore, it shows the government intention to strengthen it, while on paper in the legislation, the powers are limited to investigations. But investigation uh, can be interpreted uh, in many, many different ways. Uh, they can rely on data uh, collected by uh, uh, secret services and covered methods, uh, requesting the uh, necessary services assistance in their investigations. Um, in general, we have seen cases in Hungary where investigation by the tax authorities or other authorities has been used as a political pressure tool. So this one is adding one more uh, venue for such political pressuring, uh, at least that is the critics that many, many in the opposition side uh, has been articulating. Right, so we've mentioned these uh, two organizations that the SPO focuses on, but um, do we have another example of perhaps an institution to which some action was taken? Actually, what we have seen in the last week were two reports that the office published on them the um, pro-war and anti-war narratives in the Hungarian media and politics. 
and the report that is making it absolutely on an equal footing that some people are uh, making narratives for the war in support of the war, uh, which is practically the Western uh, media presence when uh, there is that is considered as a pro-war narrative. This makes it very difficult to distinguish what is actually um, the, uh, the difference between that and what NATO allies are saying. Um, so it is a strange um, sort of um, equal footing of anti-war and pro-war narratives, which is very close to the government's thinking about the case, uh, but is not reflective of um, the recent last two years uh, NATO alliance uh, strategic communication, absolutely not in line with that. Uh, and the other case that they um, published and other similarly short report on the Chinese vaccine narratives. Uh, as you may recall, Hungary has been using the Chinese vaccine, the Sinopharm vaccine, uh, in the beginning of the COVID crisis. That was also surrounded by some public debate, and they wanted to show that actually the government's uh, narrative is the one, and there are other critical narratives which are also criticized in the report. These reports are actually not reflective of the resources that the SPO um, has got. Uh, what I mean is these are very short and quite uh, not representative samples so far we have seen. Right, so the SPO was created just last year, and I wonder um, what, why uh, at this particular moment, and uh, do you think that perhaps Viktor Orban could could feel threatened by some of the opposition members, such as uh, Peter Mordor? Mm. Probably this has been in the making in parallel. Um, Peter Mordor's um, start of the career uh, is dated to this year, while the legislation on the SPO was already in the making in the pipeline last year. So therefore, these are events that culminated in parallel. Um, but the question is indeed uh, how it will be used in the next two years up until to the general elections in Hungary in 2026. So that is the risk, how much it can uh, instill fear or restraint in the Hungarian media. And let's not forget that the government was mentioning to consider something similar uh, as in Russia, that some uh, government press reports might be considered pro-war and might be punishable eventually. That is something that is currently debated. Right, and sort of uh, taking a step back and uh, looking at Hungary's uh, positioning on the international scene, on many occasions, uh, Viktor Orban was against um, EU, various EU policies, especially uh, support uh, for Ukraine. Now we have the, the visa issue for the Russian and Belarusian citizens. So what is the end goal here? What is he trying to achieve? Viktor Orban held his annual speech at the uh, conference in Transylvania, Romania, at Stusmanos, again praising practically only the uh, eastern heads of state, from Xi Jinping to Putin uh, to Turkey, uh, which means that uh, Viktor Orban is truly believing that the West is losing its grip on world politics and he is betting on the Western rise of power, on the East, sorry, on the Eastern rise of powers, of course. So China, Russia and their, uh, well, I wouldn't call them allies, but their sympathizers like Iran and Turkey and some others. So that is probably the driver of the foreign policy reflection. And there are not much institutions that can input it this. Uh, it is very centralized and it has become more and more centralized in recent years during the 14 years of government of Fidesz. Um, so that's something uh, that we have been witnessing, uh, that this Eastern opening policy was, uh, though criticized a lot, practically this is what's happening, and also the network that they are seeing together um, of the radical right-wing political actors across the globe. So from CPAC, what we have seen in your previous video, um, to uh, Giorgio Maloney and other uh, one of the allies that Orban Victor is trying to court. Right. Now, now Patriots for Europe is the, the third largest grouping in the EU Parliament, right? So that says something. Boton Felady, exactly. thank you, sir, for being with us this morning. Much appreciated. Thank you. And thank you for watching World Talks. Please stay tuned for more here on KPR.